This particular amp, 50 watt Dumble, is the eighth Dumble ever made. Wow. And David called me up because no, David, Lindley. David Lindley, this used to belong to David Lindley, and David had number two and number eight. Wow. And he, he, speaking of protecting tone, he wasn't going to divulge whether the solo on Mercury Blues was either one. <laughs> so what year do you think this was made? This had to be, if it's number eight, I suppose it's early 70s. God, so this, was this, could this have been out with like Jackson Brown on the road? No, it was. It was Jackson Brown and El Rayo X. Oh, won't you stay? Could yeah. have been done on that. Could have been. Oh, jeez, man. What, yeah. that tone on that? Forget about it, man. That, the, and that's, that was the aim. I mean, that, that set the standard for lap steel overdriven tone. God, right. Because, I mean, I remember hearing that thinking, what is that instrument? Yeah, like, the whole world yeah. stood at attention. Yeah. So, so this, this is that, I mean, this is probably that amp, man. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. So, so he contacted you. Contacted me. He was, he was letting, he, he has an arsenal. Oh, dumbbells. got to. Yeah. And he was letting the two, his main two, go. Number two and number eight. Wow. And he gave me first first call, and he. And we made a point of. I said, I I don't, you know, never mind what was played through which one. I just want the one that sounds the best for what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So I plugged them both in, and I ended up with eight. Wow, that's great, man. And, you can see those are. I love all of Lindley's old settings. So that's his marking. Oh right yeah, there. and I mean. <laughs> It's just like David to just go, never mind like tape, it just like boom, sharpie yeah. to face. Yeah, and and they just they're so strangely arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's you're right. You're right. Like there's is and and is that really for the bass? Did David crank the bass all the way over the is that at possible? one point, maybe? You know, I right? don't know. God. And maybe and, and treble has one that's hot up around ten too. So did he kind of do his own mastering and just go treble bass? <laughs> God, that's so crazy, man. Yeah. Have you ever tried those? Oh, you had. I'm sure you have. I'm sure oh, yeah, you've I'm like tried, said yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You've done it all by yeah. now. Because yeah. how long have you had this now? I've had this for 15 years, 10 years, God, 10 years. Good for you, man. That's great, and so great that you tour with it. You know. Again, I can't. You know, I just can't can't leave it on the shelf. Yeah. Right. Because in nothing else. Listen, there's a lot of things that come close that I've found, and there's great dumbbell sounding, beautiful, beautiful overdriven amps out there. But I just can't hit the mark the way I do with, with the dumbbells. And, and what a treat for your audience to actually hear that sound, you know? I mean, like, okay. hear that sound, you know? So it's, yeah, I love that. I love the give a shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, look, if we were guaranteed three or four lives, <laughs> yeah. it'd be a different thing, man. But you got, you got one road here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, well, that is... Fabulous, man. And 50 it, watts. The fun part was, I mean, we, we kind of met up at an undisclosed location. Oh, yeah. You know, like, like it, was a, a, it was a late night, like, like, like a one drug in deal. the morning <laughs> deal. Like, it yeah. was kind of like, I've got, I've got the shit. Meet <laughs> me at 1 a.m. at this location. Yeah, it's perfect. Wouldn't want it any other way. Really, That's though. Great. And then we, <laughs> we met up at, in, in this beautiful theater oh, that David great. had had a friend of his open up. Huh. So the so the, so the tone it was kind of it was like this. Huh. So the tone would really sing out. Oh, so you? No, we met at a at a oh. at, in a theater in, oh, an that's old, great. in an old wood theater. So you could audition them right so, there. Yeah, yeah, on stage. Wow, God, that's great. Thing. And so it was number two, number eight. Wow. And even though two was the you know the second amp Dumble ever made, that one number eight well, to me had the had the tone. Yeah, because he had like you know he had. You know, six other ones to get it right. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe that's at that it. point, yeah, yeah I maybe that made a huge. That yeah, a huge maybe part of double it. was tweaking as he went. Uh -huh. So, what cabinet are you running into? What's this? Going on? Is a Glassworks single twelve. Yeah. Okay, great. Love it. Love the cabinet. Great. And and a Celestian, um, Celestian hundred watt, I believe. Yeah, it looks like a G one twelve K one hundred. Yeah, great. Okay, and then if this isn't cool enough, just sitting right next to it, you've got its its little brother. Yeah, this 
This is an app that Alexander made for me. Now, when he's when he's making, I've heard that when he's making an app, like he he really is trying to gear it towards your thing. Absolutely. I mean, it's a custom, like a like a custom suit, you know. That's exactly what it is. Huh. That's he, great. He, you bring in, and especially with me, with I mean, I have open tunings as low as B and as high as F, and you bring all your instruments. Yeah. Round necks, lap seals, different tunings, and you and he takes notes on his oscilloscope and what it's doing with the different instruments wow. that you have. <laughs> and from there, scientifically builds an amp around your frequency spectrum. Wow, that is next level. It's, and I know people talk about the price situation, but that had nothing to do with Alexander. That's what the market demanded. Right, yeah, yeah, I, I get it, yeah. I get it. Yeah, and, and, and even at that price, I mean, the amp took me the better part of, I don't know, three to five years. It could have been three, it could have been five. It felt like a hundred. <laughs> but I, it was probably three and a half years. And I mean, it was the only amp he was working on at the time. I mean, that, wow. that's, he just does them one at a time. You just wow. get in line. If you're lucky, you get in line. And then from there, you know, I would imagine he puts... I'm gonna say like 500 hours into this. I mean, it was, God. it's a lot. I mean, when he, when he, the, the, the chassis is metal and when he, he put, you know, the clips, the clamps onto the metal, before there was one piece of solder in the whole thing, he said, I, f I finally finished, you know, the frame of the amp, I guess it's the chassis, right? Yeah. And it was so well polished and the welds and everything was, that, that could have been in a museum. Wow. And he stuck a couple of elect, you know, the the the, the, the clips, the, yeah. to, to, and put it on a on a scope, and he and it had zero charge. The metal frame for the amp had zero. There was nothing, no electrical magnetic pull coming from it. And he said, he said, I've been, I've built these, and in the end, I've put my my clip, my char, I've I've gauged it, and it's had a you know point zero one charge, and I had to start over. Wow. So, I mean, it's, he makes sure that the frame doesn't have anything pulling that shouldn't be pulling. I mean, that's how serious he takes God, it. Man. He does all the cabinetry himself. I mean, it's, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. He's an artist. Yeah. He's an artist. That is incredible.